welcome back to another video in this week's intermediate Java tutorial. So in this video, we're working on a quick mini project, mixing things up a little bit, and we are going to essentially create a class that is going to be about food. So this mini project is called Be the Host. So your goal is to create a class where you create an object, which is a specific type of food, and you're gonna play around with, with it. Not the food, um, the functions and variables in the object. So in the project, we'll obviously have variables and functions. We need to have variables to save values, and we need to have functions that, one, get the rating, so get the rating of the food from the user, set the rating, and maybe calculate this number of servings needed. So this is gonna take some time and thinking to understand, so definitely stick with it. And don't get frustrated if you don't understand it on your first try because the thought process takes some thinking to get used to. So I'm gonna show you guys what I did, it kind of explain it, and then we'll go ahead and walk through it together. So basically, I created a class called food. Now I created four variables, three of which are integers and one is a string. So the string is the food name, right? For our object, we're going to have to set the food name to whatever the object is. So say my object is dumplings, well then the string food name would be dumplings. Then I also have rating, portions, and people. So the first function is going to save or store the people value. So you're going to get a head count of the number of people that are eating. So public void, this is not going to return anything because all we're doing is saving a value. So you may think that the first two functions are useless, but in reality, we're just saving a value because in more complicated situations, it's really important sometimes to just save yourself a value for future use. So we save, we take, we create a function that takes in a parameter called number. Then we set the integer variable called people to that number that you passed in, simple, right? Next one, we're going to set the rating. Again, we're gonna take in a number for the rating value, right? And so we're gonna set the variable rating to whatever number that we pass in. Again, you're setting the values of the variables in here to whatever number you pass in when you're running your function. Then there's another function called get the rating, which is basically just going to take and return your variable rating that we previously saved as the number we took in. So that's just going to return it. Remember, when you're running this, though, you have to save this as an integer. And then this one is a function that calculates and returns portions. So say maybe you have two giant steamed buns. And so each person only can only eat two, otherwise they're gonna explode. And so maybe you would say three people would eat six, five people would eat 10. So this is gonna calculate how many portions this person's gonna eat. So it's going to return an integer and you're gonna set your portions. Portions, remember, is an integer up here. You're gonna set it equal to the value of the number of people there multiplied by two. So again, three people would eat six. So then you would go ahead and return that portion value as your return value. Then um, in our main function, we're going to create our new object called dumplings. So then we would set the food name to be dumplings, right? Because instead over here, notice that we did something different. We did not give these a set value. Instead, when we created our object, every individual object could have a new value. So we don't, in our previous video, we set the age of every animal to 10. Well, in this video, we can set every individual object to have a different value. Then we're gonna say dumplings dot people eating three, which in this case, people eating is going to say um, how many people are eating, which is gonna save the, va the um, variable people as three. The rating, set rating four, that's gonna set the rating as four. And then that's gonna, then we run the get rating function, which saves four to the integer rating. You may think this is a little repetitive, especially these two ones. The reason why we're doing this is like I said before, we use these immediately in this example, but many cases we want to save a value for a long time. We may not use it for a long time, but we will need it in the end. Then we're gonna say dumplings.amount, which was calculating the portions and save that to another integer. Then we can print it out and we'll get to those specifics in a second. So let's go ahead and try it, okay? I showed you guys very simply what I did 
um, let's go ahead and get into it. So I'm going to create a new REPL. So let me go to REPL it. And nope, no new profile. Look, new REPL, Java, create. The first thing I need to do is create my class. Now, how do we do that? We click the add file button and we say food. Now we choose food.java because we want it to be a Java file. So then we say public class food with the capitals. Then we're going to first save some variables, but don't assign the values yet. Don't, but don't give values yet. So the yet means that we will have values for them later. So after that, let's see, we're gonna do public string what food, so what type of food is it? Then we're gonna do public int um, guests, so how many guests are eating? public int rating, I guess, public int, and we're going to give servings. So what I'm gonna to try to achieve here is I'm going to try to give a food and then guests, depending on the guests, we'll have the different servings, then we'll ask them for ratings, right? So now that we've saved the variables, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to, save the guest head count. So we always wanna, as a good guest, not unlike me, you wanna count your guests first, right? So we start with public. Now I'm not gonna return anything because all I'm doing is saving a value. So public void. Then we're going to maybe give a function called count guests and then take in an integer number, right? Because when we run this function, we want to take in a parameter saying, hey, how many guests you have? Then all we're gonna do after that is we are going to set this variable guests to be the number that you passed in. So if I pass in, say if I passed in five as my number here, then that means that I would have five as the number of guests in my example over here. So, I believe this will be fine in a second. The red line should disappear soon. And so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to, oh, huh, funny. Let's, just to make sure that there's nothing wrong for now, let me reload the page just to make sure that the red line will disappear. And if it doesn't, we'll look for an error together. So the next step that I'm gonna do, there we go, the red line disappeared. The next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to get the rating from the user. So I'm getting the rating from the user and then in another one, we can set the rating. Now, in the end, if we have time, we could combine this into one function, which is fine, but different situations call for different needs, right? So public void set rating. Again, take in another number, or I guess we'll call this stars, right? Because you could maybe give this a number of stars. So then we would set the rating. Aha, I just realized why this is wrong. It's guests with the plural S, not guest. We would set the rating to be stars. And then next one, I'm going to set the rating, which would be public void, oh, no, not void, public int, and you'll see why this is, um, this is going to, let's change this to get rating and this to set rating, set rating, and you'll see why this will have to return it because we're going to then return rating. Okay, so now I know a lot of you guys are asking me, why did you separate these? These look very repetitive. Well, again, the thing is, different kinds call for different needs. And so sometimes we want to save them, just simply to save a value, because right, we don't always have to return anything immediately. So if I were to combine this, not only would it save a value, it would also return immediately. But um, in this case, what I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, just save the value for now, and we can return it in a different function if need be, okay? So last but not least, I'm going to calculate, cal calculate, so let me zoom in so you guys can see, calculate the service. So then public, and I'm gonna return a number, amount of food, 
and are actually fine servings. We're going to then say portions or servings is equal to the number of guests multiplied by, and what's a reasonable number do you guys think? I would say reasonable number maybe is three, right? So servings is equal to the number of guests multiplied by three, and then we're going to return servings. Okay, so these are our functions. What we did here, servings, what we did here is we created some um, values, I don't have a, we created some uh, variables that don't have a value yet. Then we count, we saved the guests number in our variable. Then the next part, we got the rating and we saved the number, the number passed in as our rating. The next part is we actually physically return the rating. Again, I did this in two steps because you don't always want to return things immediately. Then this way was an example of doing everything in one step. I could have just left it as servings is equal to guests multiplied by three and created another function called um, get servings and then return servings, but I decided to combine them, which is basically just saying, take the number of guests multiplied by three and return that number, save it to the variable and return that number. So we've created our class. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to create our object. So go ahead, go to your main and let's, Let's create object. So let's see, let's do food. Let's do steamed bun is equal to new food. I love steamed buns. They sound so good. In fact, I kind of want one right now. So this is our new object. This is our steamed bun. So what do we have to do in our steamed bun? Now looking back at our example here, first thing we've got to do is kind of give it the things that, asked, that it asked for. We have to give it the value of the name, of what it is. We have to run the functions that we created, all that stuff. So let's go ahead and try it. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to give it what food. So what food is it? So steamed bun dot what food is going to set equal to steamed buns. Now, you might think this is repetitive, but here's why I'm doing it. Steamed bun is the object, but I also have a string in there called what food is it, and so I set it equal to that, so that later if I wanted to print a statement out, I could use this what food variable to print things out. The next thing I want to do is the next thing I'm going to do is to count the guests. So I'm going to run the function count guests and pass in a number. So steamed bun dot count guests. Notice how I always start with steamed bun. It's super important to start with your object name at the very beginning. And say we're eating for a family of three. You can choose whatever number you want. So we've given the number of guests. Now the next thing we have to do is give get the rating and set the rating. Now get the rating, we actually have to pass in a number. So steamed bun dot get rating. And let's say steamed buns, I'll give it a five. Remember, some people like to give um, doubles. So if you were to do that, you might have to change this to public double. But since I did public int, we'll give it an integer. So we set our rating as five. Now we're going to have to actually return it. So when we return it, notice that this function has a return type. We cannot simply just run the function. We're gonna have to do this int number of stars for the rating is equal to steamed bun dot set rating. Now I don't need to pass anything in there because it didn't ask for any parameters. The last thing I need to do is calculate the servings. Again, remember that when we're running our code and we're using the return keyword, we have to set the value equal to an integer. So int portions is equal to steamed bun dot find servings and do we need to pass anything in here no we don't so there we go guys we've given it all the information necessary so the next step i want to do is print everything out for you just so you guys can see what's going on here so today we are having and we're going to say we're having steamed buns right so we're going to say steamed bun dot what food or dinner. Um, we have, and then let's give the number of guests. So we have, 
We have three guests with us today, but the number of guests, remember, is saved as your guests variable. So just like we're gonna, just like we did in the example here, we're going to give steamed buns dot guests. So let's go over here and say steamed buns, steamed buns dot guests. Is it plural guest or singular guest? It's plural. So it's really important to do guests. We have so three guests with us today. So that means we need to cook and then this would have to be the number of servings. Now notice that our number of servings, we don't need to put steamed bun dot whatever because we've saved it as an integer in the main function. So all we have to do now here is portions because we've saved it it over here. So we need to click blank portions servings of food. The guests enjoyed our food quite a bit. So they gave us, so this is probably where they would rate us. So we would give it a number. Now since the number was already saved here, we don't have to do steam bun dot whatever, we would do number of stars. They gave us number of stars, stars, as a rating, as a rating. Alrighty, perfect. So what I've done here, let's run our code, make sure everything works, and then we'll explain in detail what happened. So it says, today we are having steamed buns for dinner. We have three, oops, I need to put, we have three guests with us today. So let me run this again, but, it looks like there were no errors, which is good. Today we're having steamed buns for dinner. We have three guests with us today, so that means we need to cook nine servings of food, so nine steamed buns. The guests enjoyed our food quite a bit, so they gave us five stars as a rating. So notice that based on what we did here, when we printed it out, it's kind of almost like our Mad Libs, right? So again, steamed bun dot what food needs to have the steamed bun in front of it because this is the object variable. Again, guests was also an object variable. Portions was saved as an integer over here. So we don't need to do steam bun dot anything. Same thing with the number of stars. It was all saved locally as this integer. This is pretty hard to understand. I get it. It's kind of complicated, but once you wrap your head around it, it should all make sense. So I know I blabbered quite a bit. If you want, you can find the REPL. You can find my REPL it account. It's Dear Piggy Tech, and you can take a look at it in even more detail. Um, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Watch this video a couple more times if you're confused, and I think you guys will get it. So thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys.